Hello everyone, it is Toby from Toby's Urban Sketch and we are going to do another quick sketching challenge today. So, 10 minutes to do the scene which is now in the top corner. Now this is a photo I took on a lovely weekend in Cambridge and um, it is bursting with complexity. So how can we achieve this in just 10 minutes? Well, it's focusing on, I think, shadows and pertinent details, pertinent shapes. I'm going to go for a starting with watercolors um so we're just going to get these big shadows in and then we'll use some water not waterproof some normal water soluble ink to capture some of those interesting details now these shadows i'm going to make just a, a little random warm mix i've got a bit of neutral and a little neutral tint a little bit of red and starting the clock I'll just pop in sort of suggestions of these shapes um, and we don't have to be rigidly stuck to these later this is just about getting in an idea which we can ink on top of and it's gonna be really loose really really loose there's this big shadow coming across here as well and then we've got this sort of chappy on a bike so let's just remind ourselves he exists and these people can exist over here as well and then going back pick up a nice bit of some warm orange tones and let's just start getting some of these roofs suggested and just bring that color down and trying to stick with a kind of perspective which might be realistic you could do this in a much neater way you could for example you could um do pencil sketch first you could do it as a sort of proper quote unquote proper watercolor as well all of these things would have slightly different effects but i'm sure all have plenty of, sort of value and interest so just have a go at doing the things which you enjoy have a little play and that's what i'm doing today okay and there's kind of some little things looming in here which might be fun just to suggest and then let's get some water lashed in clean off the brush get a little bit more water in places that's just going to get some of those cauliflower textures okay gonna just dry things off quickly okay so we have this framework now to work within and despite using the hair dryer, some of these splashes have kept this lovely texture, which is great. Nice little background for us to apply some ink. And remember, this is water soluble, so after we've added the ink, we'll be able to activate it and get some lovely tone going. And I'm going to just go straight for it and start applying some of these shapes in ink just over our previous suggestions of shape. And this is where we're going to have to be a little bit fast and loose with what's on the on the reference and um yeah just play it by ear and see what we can produce combining these shapes with some ink so i'm just liking this uh perspective line so we'll, we will focus on using that and i'm trying to just capture those biggest shapes in the background we've got this lovely awning and then we've got all these people here so let's just get their idea in as well and they're just going to be sort of a series of heads and bodies if we give them some tone that's also some hands and the shadows those hands are producing there's a few more people just in front they're further away so just make them a little bit smaller and there we go but it's now sort of a busy little crowd this um roof line can then come down we have to decide where we stop at the edge of the image and i think we'll stop at the edge of this roof line really and then try and get our window shapes in with these little funny slanting roofs attached to them and there we go and the roof itself goes across and then there's some other looming structures behind that even don't want to go like too excessive on the detail because 
it's an easy way to get lost and not finish this sketch in the in the 10 minutes so moving on we'll start adding some of these windows in we want to the light side of the building now so just perhaps doing a little more more gentle touch with the pen will help us encapsulate the idea of a light and dark side of the building certainly when we activate the ink we'll be trying to activate more of it over here to create more tone we can add some more suggestions of people. Let's get this curve in as well. And we can bring the curve up. I mean, he's just keep popping these roofs in, really, don't we? How are we doing for time? So we're on probably on about five, six minutes. It's kind of funny Victorian house with overlapping stories in the background and all the other ones with big windows, really big windows. I quite like this um, pavement here as well, it's got all sorts of road signs and these can just be really sort of cracking points of contrast, something to focus the eye on the front and we've got this big lamp and I just twisted the lamp around the wrong way because all of this is still wet and my pen won't like writing there and we've got this big tall building here just about getting in these really big coarse shapes is all we need to do and also keeping that perspective going because that's what really lets us know the scale of what's going on and these buildings in the back are just getting so small compared to these ones in the front that is what is happening in our reference. And then at the edge we've got this set of trees and some looming buildings which we can just suggest. And another pavement. Okay. Now the last bit I want to do with the pen is just get some of these details back in our focal area. So we've got windows, and a couple more big windows, and then even more windows which I've sort of seen and dotted in with the colour but not got as far as adding ink to. And let's just get this awning in again. Do you see I'm just moving around, and this is by no means a perfect way to do anything. But just moving around and getting this sketch in, in, in parts. I'm going to just create this frame really quickly because I think that will help just capture the scene in an interesting kind of coarse way. Now I'm going to come in with my brush. So just dry it off a little bit so it's still a bit wet but you can see it's sort of malleable and that will let us just activate but control the ink. And I've used this um, brown ink, which activates into this lovely warm tone. And the aim is to get this ink to activate, provide this tone in these shaded areas, but also use it to create some contrast. So in these people, for example, we can just activate it in the shadows and leave their white areas. Up here we can double down on our contrast, on our tones. And as we go back there are lovely shadows and we've half captured those with the watercolours. But we can just, again, if we activate the ink in, or in vertical stripes, that gives that idea of those shadows. Same with these up here. And then these windows just can add a tiny little bit of tone. And of course, shop fronts are very often quite dramatic and dramatically dark compared to their surroundings. Okay, and there we go. So that is kind of the ink activated just like I wanted to. And we've got a little bit of time left, I believe. Or the tiniest amount of time. So let's see 
what happens if I just try and sketch in on this web page our little cycling man it's really big shapes and look I've got this lovely area I can just let him absorb into and I think I'm actually very happy with the decision to do a last minute cyclist there because it adds a nice little focal point at the front and there we go that is a 10 minute challenge sketching from a really loose set of colors and then bringing in some details some tone some funny colors with the 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 way the ink activates and goes pink i'm not going to add anything else to this i'm just going to sign it and it's already essentially dry so there you go you can see the finished image straight away i think i think that took me about 10, 10 minutes and i'll see when i when i put a timer on in a minute um thank you very much for watching if you enjoyed these please do um, like and subscribe and in the comments let me know if you'd have done something different if you like it if you don't um i love hearing feedback so yeah let me know have a good rest of your day